So no Tyler Adams in that Leeds team because he is on his way to Bournemouth to play under Andoni Iraola. You can see the deal that is set there for him, a £20 million fee, keeping him in Premier League football. So let's talk a little bit about this then, shall we? Shaka Nadam and Craig here with me. Is this the level that Tyler Adams is set to be playing at Bournemouth in the Premier League? No, I actually think he's a bit better than that. I think it's a good signing for Bournemouth, obviously American ownership. I think he'd be a good player for them. Tigerish and don't forget Chelsea and one or two others we're looking at him, albeit maybe as a backup for potential other signings that they might not get. But I think this is a, a better get for Bournemouth than it is for Tyler Adams, albeit he'll get you know regular game time in the Premier League, you would imagine, and I think he'll do a good job for them. I, I just feel that he's actually one of... I thought at Leeds he was the best of the American bunch at Leeds in terms of his performances. Now, he steps over the line now and again and uh, in terms of loses a little bit of discipline, but that's OK. It can happen sometimes. But, I, I uh, yeah, I think it's a good signing for Bournemouth. Good for him that he's going to play and he's not going to be stuck in the championship. But I actually think he's a wee bit better than where... I think Bournemouth will end up this season, which is going to be, I think, fighting a bit of a relegation battle again. Uh, but you said the point, good for him that he's going to play, because Shaka, I suppose that's one of the things he could be looking at. He knows that Bournemouth will be playing week in, week out. Maybe the minutes wouldn't have been guaranteed at a club like Chelsea. Yeah, that, that's the thing, and, and that's where I disagree with Craig. I, I, I think Bournemouth is a perfect fit for, for, for Tyler Adams, especially under Areola, a manager who's as well respected and can probably develop. Tyler Adams' game. I, I didn't see... Listen, I, I understand the attraction to go into a club like Chelsea and, and being involved in that setup. And as a player, that's kind of the environment you want to be in. You, you're always back yourself. But as somebody looking in from the outside and totally neutral, I, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I, I didn't think you'd get much playing time, if, if any at all. And, and that doesn't help his, his development in, in any way. Um, Bournemouth have shown themselves to be a, a good footballing team. All right, they, as I just mentioned, they've got a new manager, so we see how that goes. But he's got a, a, a record and reputation to suggest that'll be more of the same, if not better. So I, I, I think he's, he's at the right place, uh, at the right club. Yes, it'll be a tough season. Yes, it, it, it'll um, he, he'll probably be wrong end and, and, and battling relegation. But I, I, again, I, I don't think that's something you, you should be afraid of either. I'm not suggesting that uh, that he should have gone to Chelsea. But you I, think? I, I, no, you I, think I just said, I just said there was Bournemouth. clubs like that were interested in him potentially. Mm. I, I don't think Bournemouth is a terrible move for him. I believe the question was, and my answer would be, I think he's somewhere in between, where. Bournemouth may or may not end up, and don't forget, Gary O'Neill did a brilliant job last year, but they were fighting relegation till the last few weeks. I think he's somewhere in between, which is the same place where I thought Christian Pulisic always was. was wasn't really a top four or five elite-level player at an English club, and wasn't somebody who should have been in the bottom four or five fighting relegation. It's somewhere in between. And that's kind of where uh, I think his skill set deserves to be. Now, he's at Bournemouth, they're a little club, they might have a great season, I'm not convinced about that. But, yeah, I'm not suggesting that he should go to Chelsea and sit on the bench, I'm just saying clubs like that were interested in him, he's an American international, and I think it's, he's, you know, a, a better move for him would have been somewhere in the middle of where those clubs are. He hasn't got that, he's gone to little old Bournemouth, and I think he'll do all right for them. Yep, time will tell. Meanwhile, Theo Walcott has confirmed that he will be retiring from the game and hanging up his boots as well. Obviously, he's had a very long career playing for the likes of Southampton, Arsenal and Everton. 47 England caps in that time as well. Nadam, you played with him. Going out at the right time? Um, I don't know the exact reason for why he's, um, he's, he's stopping now. I think... Like, he probably could have potentially played a bit longer, but I think he, he's very comfortable in himself. He's had a fantastic career. I remember from way back when, when he made the England squad, I think it was in 2006, but he was never planned to play. You know, I think it was under Sven Goran Eriksson, but what a talent he was, what a great player he was. Really nice guy, worked hard. I think, do you remember the times when he was being compared to Henri when he first went to Arsenal? Seems crazy and feels like such a long time ago, but again, a fantastic career. I think all the clubs where he's been at 
will say he's been a great servant for them. And, I, you know, I wish him all the best in the next stage of his career, whatever that may be. But like I said, really, really good guy. It's good to see good guys um, going out, you know, when they decide as opposed to the game, sort of chewing them up and spitting them out. Where do you think it went wrong for Theo Walcott in his career? I don't know if it went wrong or not. I mean, I'm not really one for these retirement sort of segments, as you well know. I can't really be... Can't really be bothered with them. Players come, players go, players players play, players retire. No, the producer did say today, remember Craig Gates' retirement announcements? Birthdays and retirements, I just can't stand them. I mean, what's the point? It's Ronaldinho's birth to the day, you know, all that sort of nonsense. Oh, it's Balotelli's birth. Look, I'm not going to talk about Theo Walcott's career. All I'm going to say is, I just, my abiding memory is when, and Ned mentioned it, when, Er Sven Goran Eriksson, it might have been his debut, it might, might not have been, it was so long ago, he scored a hat-trick. I believe he scored a hat-trick for England. I think it was Croatia. And I thought at that point, he was going to go on and just have... He did a great career, a very good career, don't get me wrong. But he looked at that point as if he was going to be the world beater. And sometimes when stuff like that happens, it's always difficult to keep that going. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I remember him busting on the scene as this young kid and Ericsson gave him his head and it was like, whoa. And then it became quite difficult at times, but as Nathan said, it's a great career. Lots of people would hold their hands up and say, I'll have that career. You know, all those people out there saying, you know, you see them all, social media and beyond. Ah, he didn't do this. Oh, he can't do that. There is millions of people out there who would snap up careers like that. That's factual. And he's done it. He's decided to retire. Uh, that's his choice. Maybe he wants to take up Maybe he wants to take up punditry or something. Maybe he watches the FC show and thinks, I could do that. Maybe he wants to come and live in the Farmington Valley. No, you're Beautiful taking it too far, man. <laughs> you're, taking, you're taking it too far, man. Do you agree with what Craig's saying, Shaka? I, I absolutely do. Listen, I, I think for a player who burst onto these scenes at 16 years old, to have an 18-year career is one. Uh, and, and playing on the level that, that, that he did is one that anybody should, should be proud of. No, listen, I, again, I, I understand, or, or, may, or maybe, I, 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 let me take that back. I won't say I understand, but you can, you can hear the sentiment at 16 years old making that kind of a splash. You expect more, um, during the, more say, in terms of silverware during, during the course of his, his, his career. But, I, I, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Craig in that. Um, you look at, at, at who he's played for, the games he's done, the numbers that he's been able to put up, I, I, I think that that's one that, that anybody should, should be proud of. And the other thing I think we that's kind of been forced in, into into our, our own kind of um, uh, understandings over over recent months is the the mental side to, to this game is one that that plays a huge factor and affects di people differently. So after all this time, you don't know how that kind of success or that kind of expectation affects a 16-year-old. You don't how under we we probably can't re fully understand how playing 18 years old with that kind of pressure, um, how, how, how you deal with it. If Theo Walcott has, has fallen out of, the love, out of love with the game at this point and decided now is as good time to, to, to call it a, a day as any, uh, fair play to him because, I, again, I, I think his career is one that most people would give their right arm for. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.